Hey y'all, how's it going? I wanted to do an instructional video for you today and I want to go ahead and say at the beginning we're on iPhone quality here and uh, it may break up a little bit when I'm pushing through this amp but uh, I wanted this to be a promo for my Skype lessons and I didn't want there to be a big quality difference between a nice video here on the YouTube channel uh, shot with a Canon camera or whatever and uh, the webcam on the Skype lessons so this is sort of a simulation for Skype and that's the reason for the quality but uh, what I'm going to do today is a southern rock guitar lesson. I've spent a lot of time in my music career trying to play this music. Um, if I had to pick a favorite genre, this would be it. And uh, really have enjoyed figuring this stuff out in my career. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to talk about my opinion and my tips on how to get good southern rock tone. And then I'm going to show you a lick that you can use in the key of G. That's um, obviously one that you can take and use anywhere, but it's a good demonstration of ways that you can think about playing Southern Rock, kind of like a lot of things I do. Uh, there's a two-fold purpose to learning the lick. So let's talk about tone real quick. Um, I don't have a lot of complicated gear here, um, and you don't need it for Southern Rock in my opinion. Um, what I'm using the guitar is just a Gibson Les Paul Traditional. Um, very blessed to have this. I mean, this is an American-made Les Paul, and uh, really have enjoyed playing it. It's all stock, no special pickup changes or anything. And um, I'm running into a Fender Blues Jr. I don't have a PV Mace or anything, uh, and I may never have one, but I like the tone that I've been able to get from this amp as I've tweaked it over the years. Um, this is just a little tube amp that really puts out the tone, and I like that it has a very wide range on the gain that you can get from it. Uh, sometimes when I mess with a two-channel amp, it's like the clean channel doesn't get dirty enough and the uh, dirty channel starts too dirty. I have this like in-between place that I like, especially for Southern Rock. And that's what I love about this amp is that, um, you know, you got a gain, it's called volume, that goes from 1 to 12. And uh, so what I've got right now, I've got this amp set up for something relatively clean. And... Um, on my volume, my gain, I'm on about 9 out of 12. So uh, notice it's up there where it might break up if I play hard enough. But it's definitely not saturated. Alright, the EQ is almost flat, um, so nothing special there. And the master volume, I have it relatively no, low right now because the amp's sitting right beside me and I don't want to commit suicide to my ears. So uh, I've got a little bit of reverb on it. I love the spring reverb on this amp. Uh, it's on 3 out of 12 right now. That's pretty standard for me. So, in my opinion, Southern Rock Guitar Tone, especially pertaining to the 70s and bands like Leonard Skinner, the Charlie Daniels Band, Marshall Tucker, the tone was relatively clean, and I can't stress that enough. It was not saturated. You didn't have anything resembling like a heavy metal sound or even like a classic rock sound like Boston or something like that. The drive of the music really came from what was being played, and it came from having punchy tone rather than distorted tone. This is, I mean, having grown up playing bluegrass, elements of this remind me of playing bluegrass. So when you got a really good driving bluegrass band, playing in the pocket, doing the dynamics all the way. Um, it's kind of similar with Southern Rock. You've got all these subtleties that you really need to focus on. Really syncopated riffs, punchy tone, lots of clarity, getting some grab off of your pick. These are things that really make the tone happen. You can't hide behind distortion with this. And I really like that about playing this music. And I'll talk about how to vary that a little bit. So um, right now, like I said, this is kind of a Leonard Skinner thing. Gary Rossington or Alan Collins. <laughs> questions that's what we're doing and um, the guitar I'm on the back pickup 
my volume is on uh, just over eight and uh, same thing for the tone actually so I've backed it off a little bit it just makes it feel a little bit better to me um, so as a quick side note here if you want to make this tone more like the great additions that were made to southern rock in the 90s like the black crows and raging slab and then these days with people like blackberry smoke um, you need a little bit more game for that it's still believe me way way closer to the clean side but there is a little bit of a thick kind of breakup on there um, notice I said breakup not saturated distortion so um, to give you an imitation of that real quick I've got a fat switch on this blues junior that uh, yeah, I mean comes standard so it just increases the gain some. I'm going to kick that in and I'm going to push my volume up to about 10. or you know the current blackberry smoke type of tone going back to the original tone now and i'll give you a little lick to work with here this is straight up gary rossington and alan collins this sounds like it could have been played on uh don't ask me no questions because uh, it's in g and i really got these kind of ideas from learning solos on that tune so let me play it for you get a little bit better camera angle here and I'll break it down after I've played it. Alright, so what we're doing is we're coming out of a blues scale here. Obviously we're only using the top part of it, but... That's generally where we are and then we're bending up out of it. So, um, we come in forming a little five and flat seven doubles flat five and flat seven double stop there excuse me coming up to the one and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to bend that up a step and a half to our flat three and when it comes to this part right hand technique is so important um if you've seen my acoustic stuff i always use blue chip picks and I love them uh, for everything that I do in the acoustic world and even some electric stuff. The only reason I'm not using a blue chip right now is because blue chip gets the job done. And what I mean by that is they're made to be really slick and low resistance. So they're great for the acoustic stuff. When I play electric, I want something that grabs and therefore blue chip necessarily does not work. So what I use is an Ultex uh, 1.14. Love these picks because they got great texture for this kind of stuff. So I'm digging in on the right hand, and you can hear some scrape. That's where it is right there. You have to keep it muted with your left hand and uh, have your bends nice and in tune. And you're shifting the pitch just a little bit there within the lick. But uh, that's pretty much all there is to it, and it's all about feel. Alright, for the next part we're going to go up to the top and bend up to a 5 here. And this is really Leonard Skinner type stuff right here. Where I'm getting multiple notes out of one bend, I'm, I'm hitting it on the way up. I'm hitting a flat 3 note right there. Then the 4. And then, in some way, I'm sort of hitting four, flat five, five on my way up. It's not quite that clean. There's a lot of, uh, you know, microtones going on here. But you get the idea. And you got the right hand stuff going on. Same principles. A little vibrato. 
vibrato there. I don't use too much. Uh, there's just enough space to need a little bit right there. <laughs> So I just wanted to travel down the neck a little bit before I finish this lick. So I'm hitting a quick double stop here with a bar with my first finger. And uh, what that is, it's a flat 7 and a flat 3 together, which has got a nice sound when you use it just quickly. I'm sliding out of this blue scale position to another one you're familiar with. We're not really hanging out there, but we're going to be there for a minute. So let me do that slow. Alright. I'm going to travel back up the neck and hit sort of two pieces of a triad. So I've got a three on the B string and a one up here on the B string. And I'm doing a little bit of weird shifting. Um, I end up on my third finger there, but I use my second to do the slide just because of where I want to be when I get up the neck. All right, and that's the lick. So it's a really useful lick. You can go other places with it. I mean, that I left it up there because now we can... All kinds of places you can take that, but uh, it's really a lesson um, in restraint and tone and feel, uh, which is stuff that I had to work on a whole lot being um, a busy acoustic flat picker. You know, flat picking is necessarily very full and relatively busy compared to playing electric guitar. So I had to focus on these kind of subtleties a lot when I started learning to play this music. I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, please take it and carry it into other areas, see how you can develop it. Try it out in other blues scales and with other bands, but uh, there's a good start in place. And uh, hopefully the tone stuff made sense. And, you know, another just sort of philosophy type thing here. I did this with a blues junior. So um, you can always make do with the gear you have. Obviously this is a tube amp, so it does sound better than a Line 6. But, you know, there's so much to be said for just spending a lot of time working with your gear and just using your ear constantly. You can accomplish a lot that way. And uh, it's almost better to do that and then find out what you want to buy to upgrade because you know what you're looking for. So really dig in and enjoy working with what you have to uh, craft the tone you're looking for. All right, really enjoyed this. Y'all hit me up. I'll put my contact information in the, in the comments or in the description, sorry. And uh, just let me know if you want to do some lessons on this stuff because this was just a little taste of the stuff that I've learned through exploring Southern Rock. And uh, see y'all next time. Thank you.